This is a 17 year old iMac that I picked up at a car boot earlier in the summer for £10. And uh, today I want to see if we can get it up and running and usable. So it is currently naked, I do apologise for that. Um, the main issue with this, if you did see the video when I got it, it chimed, it booted up, but there was no display out. So I've been taking it apart to take a look at that. Uh, it is also very heavy, so I'm gonna save its modesty and pop it down. So as I say, I picked it up for 10 pounds with very little hope that it was actually gonna work. And uh, it did at least chime at the time, which is great. It means it is booting. It means some of the hardware is working, but there was no display out. So I took this thing apart. I took off the front screen and I instantly realized that someone else had been in here because there was only about three screws holding it together compared to like the 12 that were supposed to be there. So that wasn't a great sign, um, but opened her up and had a look under the screen to discover that A, the hard drive had been removed, which is good. If you're gonna sell old tech, make sure that you wipe it thoroughly or destroy the hard drive if all else fails. But also, probably the person that went in and did that, uh, they actually forgot to reconnect the display to its power. So that would be why we didn't get any display out. And thankfully, just plugging it back in, we got display out, it booted absolutely fine. Of course, no hard drive, it didn't boot to anything, just the bootloader, but it works, which is very, very cool. So I'm gonna throw in a cheap SSD. This was a 480 gig SSD for less than 30 pounds. This is your reminder that if you currently have any computers that take a SATA drive um, and it hasn't already got an SSD, give it an SSD. It will really help performance and they're so cheap now that uh, unless you really need massive bulk storage, this is the way to go. Get an SSD. So we're gonna get that installed and then we're gonna get Exubuntu installed on this. I think a nice lightweight Linux distribution should really help performance. And we're gonna check it out and see if any of it uh, is still functional, see what we could use this machine for. And as a reminder, if you do enjoy watching old tech be saved from the landfill and repurposed, please do hit that subscribe button. We're still a very, very small channel. Every single subscription helps. All right, I'm gonna get this all set up and I'll see you in a minute. So it's the next day and in all honesty, the hardest thing about this project has actually been trying to get the camera to give a decent angle of the screen. It is so reflective, like even with it on already, you can really see uh, the reflection, which, which isn't great. But uh, here we are, it's back in its uh, housing, it's all covered up um, and install process as smooth as it could be really. Put the SSD in there, uh, of course, did every effort to secure it with some duct tape uh, and then just plugged in a USB, booted Xubuntu and here we are, it's installed, it's good to go. I must admit, I'm very impressed already that everything is working as smoothly as it is. So what, from a hardware perspective, are we actually working with here? Well, I was never really 100% sure until obviously um, I'd got something installed so I could check the hardware. So if we have a look at NeoFetch, and hopefully you can see that, you can definitely see me, but we are running, it's an iMac 7.1. We are running an Intel Core 2 Duo T7300 at two gigahertz with an AMD ATI Mobility Radeon HD 2400 XT and three gigabytes of RAM. So in terms of what we could do with this, well, we could definitely upgrade the RAM. Uh, this machine officially supports four gig, but it will actually go up to six gig. So we could get uh, an upgrade there. Uh, if we replace the one gig stick with a four gig, we'd have six gig. So that's an option. There's not a huge else we could do. We could, I think, get a slightly faster CPU as well. It is a socketed CPU. This is still an era where you can just about upgrade stuff in here. It is harder. The fact that the screen is magnetized on is very weird to me, but you can still do it. Nonetheless, we have a full desktop operating system here. So we're gonna try a few things. Uh, the first thing I actually wanted to test out was the webcam and the microphone. So here is some footage of that. 
Okay, here we go. We are recording using the built-in iSight webcam and the IMAX microphones. Um, yeah, obviously very low quality, very low frame rate as well, but this is just using OBS and it works instantly. Uh, the system sees the camera, the system knows what to do with it. There was nothing else I had to do. So I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with that. Um, and I can create these recordings without any problem at all and pretend like I'm in 2008 and making my first vlog on this new thing called YouTube. <laughs> it's great. I have to say, very, very impressed by that, to be honest. It, you know, it just works. In terms of what else we could do with, with this machine, well, in terms of just browsing the internet, this is a completely up-to-date version of Firefox. You've got a completely up-to-date secure operating system, and you can actually browse the modern web really quite nicely. Um, things can take a minute to load. The Wi-Fi in this isn't the fastest. Obviously, big fancy uh, animations and stuff take a second to get going, but you can you can browse the modern web. If you just needed a web portal, this works really, really well. Uh, very, very impressed. But what about YouTube? And welcome to another developer advocate at and this time we are heading to Disney World for Mickey's very Merry Christmas party. So for those that are new to the channel, uh, the Developer Advocate at series is basically a series of videos. Okay, we're going to shut him up there for a second. Uh, in terms of audio, speakers work absolutely great. There's some pretty decent speakers in this machine, I will say. Uh, in terms of the video side of it, performance isn't as good as I was hoping. Uh, you can smooth video at 480p, but as soon as you start trying to push it up 720 or beyond, it really gets choppy. It also doesn't seem to particularly like playing video full screen either. Um, not quite sure what's going on there, but it's definitely not the best experience, that's for sure. I would definitely rather be playing local files um, or you know you could get away with low resolution YouTube that you know it's still possible it's just not as performant as I'd hope of course next up this is a Mac famously terrible at gaming so uh, we're gonna try and do some gaming and <laughs> see how that works well here we go we have uh, Minecraft, brand new, latest release, 1.21 Minecraft running on here. And you know what? With a little bit of tweaking, we've got it fairly smooth. We are hitting around between 20 and 30 frames per second. It does stutter sometimes, mainly when it's loading new chunks in. But this is an entirely playable game. We have reduced the resolution somewhat, and we have uh, put down the render distance to six chunks. But this is a playable modern, up-to-date version of Minecraft running on 17-year-old hardware. Uh, that is pretty cool. Uh, and I must admit, I'm very, very impressed. It it works. It works well if you want a super low budget. Remember, this cost me £10. Super low budget way to play Minecraft. Here you go. This is, this is it. Um, yeah, very, very impressed with this. Let's try something else. Now, another benefit of it being a modern up-to-date operating system, we can install Steam. We can run games from Steam. So let's check this out and let's see what we can run. Now, one thing I will say, uh, there is an issue here. Most games on Steam on Linux want to use Vulkan for graphics processing. Uh, the GPU in this very much does not have Vulkan support. So there's a lot of translation layers that have to happen to get graphics to work on here. So what does that mean? For performance, well, it means even Half-Life 1, when running with GPU rendering, um, well, it does this. We Hello and welcome to the Black Mesa Hazard Course, where you will be trained in the use of a hazardous environment suit. I am your holiday yeah. assistant. We're getting about 10 frames, but it is choppy as all hell as well, and the audio is a mess. Plus side is that Half-Life does still have software rendering. And that is significantly smoother. 
that actually works incredibly well. You know, this is a game that's designed for an era where software rendering is still important. Of course, we lose the on screen CPU rendering. Moving around but in your HEV suit can be slightly disorienting at first. Take a moment. But it works really well. Um, so, you know, if you want to play games that are software rendering, you can definitely do this. But considering it won't even play Half-Life using GPU rendering, we're not going to go any further. Um, I cannot see any other game which requires GPU rendering to work. But you could probably get away with a lot of 2D games as well. And like I say, a lot of old 90s games that have software rendering options. That's going to work too. Um, and actually it's a very playable experience. You could definitely play Half-Life and play through Half-Life on this if that was what you were looking to do. So there we have it. That is uh, a 17 year old iMac running the up-to-date version of Linux uh, and doing it pretty well, I have to say. Sure, it's not going to blow away with multitasking or anything like that, but if you've got some very simple basic needs for computing, it's a very beautiful machine to be using as a basic computer. The screen itself as well is gorgeous. Uh, I might have to look at trying to repurpose this machine as a second display or something because it really is very nice. Um, if you have any other ideas of what we could use this old machine for, please do comment down below. Um, obviously we could try installing macOS back on it. I believe 10.11 is the newest version that will run. So it's not so old. Um, things will probably still function, but uh, I could just quite like running Linux on these old machines because it really does push them to their limits, um, and I'm very impressed. All right, thank you very much for watching. We're going to wrap it up there for today. If you have enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button and subscribe, and I will see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.